Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Wildly Graceful. Today we are on the outside of the Coleman Lantern 17B. Um, for a 17 foot travel trailer, the outside is pretty simple, um, but it's pretty functional. You just got to be really particular about what you do and how you maximize all the features and functionality. So today we're not only going to walk around it, we're going to give you some of the measurements that if you got yours on order and you're waiting for it, you can start doing some planning. Yep. So you see here is the outside compartment. It is not an all the way through one. It's just one door and it's fairly small. Can you hold that for you? Absolutely. Unfortunately, this one has the plastic hook, not the magnetic hook, which was kind of sad on Coleman's part. It is exactly 20 inches wide by about 10 inches deep. And in a later episode, I'll show you how I maximize storage. You can scoot in here and take a look real quick for a camera girl. Um, I've got it pretty packed in, but it's incredibly organized and easy to use. Stay tuned, that's a whole nother episode. One other quick thing, um, the lock on this, we had to use some graphite WD-40 uh, to get this kind of loose. Um, when, you, when you put your key in the first time, it's brand new and you turn it, um, the whole lock assembly kind of turns. Uh, so just make sure that you that you're getting your lock movement and not the whole cylinder rotating. Um, we found that it's got your marker lights, which are pretty standard. Um, here you can see the awning. We have it out because we're in Arizona and it's darn hot. So um, it's got a 10 foot awning, which um, we think is actually pretty good. Um, and it's automatic, which is also really nice. Press of a button um, probably takes about 20 seconds or so to come all the way out um, and then come all the way back. So it's not the fastest, um, but again, it's it's automatic, which is a nice feature. Um, your standard entry door, um, you know, plenty, plenty of room there. It does have a latch so that you can latch your entry door open uh, if you'd like to. This is uh, just a little plastic one. So some people are interested in getting a new one. You can see it's kind of just um, kind of barely on there. Down here, um, we have the standard step. We added this piece just this morning. The step is about nine inches deep and about two feet long, two and a half feet long. We did car cover it with a carpet. It's spring loaded in the back, so it's adjustable to fit any size. Just, there are different sizes from 18 inches up to 36 inches. So make sure you just get one that's similar to the size of your step. We also picked this up um, just because this is kind of a a tall step. How, how far to up to that step? This is off the ground, leveled in our driveway, 16 inches off the ground. So if you're looking to get your aerobics, your stair step, um, you can do it right here because this is, you can see, um, it's it's got my leg parallel to the ground to get up to. So um, we do have folks that visit us that are a little bit older. So we found this step for about 15 bucks at um, Camper World. Um, 18 inches wide, a foot deep, and about 10 inches high, and it's the perfect addition to that step, and it weighs nothing. Just makes it a lot easier to get up and into the trailer than trying to take that big step in the morning. So, continuing to move around the outside of the trailer, um, here you're wired for WineGuard. There is a ton of conversation going on on all the forums about WineGuard and what does it do and what do I get. Um, all you get out of the box, the trailer box, um, all you really get is an FM radio, right? So in the inside, we showed you there's a, um, a cable TV hookup. Um, you don't get cable TV. There's no cable TV outlets on the outside. It's not anything related to TV. Uh, it really is just an FM radio. And if you sign up for the service, it can boost your Wi-Fi. So we'll do a separate tech episode on WineGuard. Um, we're currently looking at whether or not we're going to do it. So down here, um, just two standard power outlets, um, which is great for outside. So um, do you want to measure about how far those are? They are about 30 inches off the ground and about 18 inches from your door. So really great for uh, setting yourself up outside. Um, we'll do a separate tire episode. Um, these happen to be, there's a lot of questions on the tire. These are Ridgeway Sports LH001. They happen to be 215 75 R14s. 
Uh, if you're looking for tire covers, which we just bought, you want to get about the 26 inch uh, diameter tire covers to cover those so that you protect your tires when you're not using it. Uh, Coleman branding, obviously, which is pretty nice. And then here you have your hot water heater. Uh, this is a manual lighting hot water heater, meaning you need your stick lighter and you're gonna stick your stick lighter in there while this switch right here is turned all the way over to pilot. So you just rotate it over to pilot and then you would press your red button while you were actually in there with the lighter. So um, we're at home, so it's turned off right now. And then this adjusts your temperature of your water between hot and warm. All right, fairly simple, fairly standard. As we continue to move around again, you have your rear markers. And then we're at the back of Stella. Stella is what we call her so that when things go wrong, we can be like, Stella! Um, again, some markers up at the top. Um, we are pre-wired for a backup camera. Um, that hasn't been installed yet, but we will uh, probably more than likely be installing a backup camera. Um, standard tail lights and your bumper. Now the bumper um, is one of the bumpers that has a hollow insert. Simply pull off the outside and you can use it for, you'd say, sewer tube, right? No. Um, it's where you store all your bear repellent. You just put them back here and your bear repellent in the back. No. Um, we had to put our sewer tube Hose. in a plastic tote. Um, got our backwash valve and everything in there because uh, it didn't fit. So this is a rhino tube um, and there was no way that was going in there. The, uh, the tube itself would go in but the brackets on the end that are not removable uh, wouldn't go in. So um, we just put it in a Sterilite container that will we'll open up and wash out after every trip. Um, spare tire. That's additional. Negotiate that as part of your deal. Uh, so this is just a Goodyear Endurance spare tire. We have a spare tire cover coming for it. Um, and then the bracket and such. You can get those almost anywhere. Uh, E-Trailer has them. The brackets are about $90 or so. And then you got to buy the rim and the tire. Um, you can also go to a tire shop and they'd probably get them for you for, they're just 14 inch tires. Uh, does not come with the Coleman 17B. As we move around, we have again, marker lighting. And then over here, we start getting um, to some of our more important stuff. Here you have your black water tank drain and your pull for your black water. Gate. Gate. So, Gate valve. and then you have your valve pull for your gray water, right? This is gray, that is black. It's pretty self-explanatory. And um, I can pull this off because we've never used it. So uh, that's where it's going to drain. Um, one of the interesting things that I found and was worried about was the fact that this kind of just hangs out here underneath your trailer. Um, so you only have about 10 and a half inches of clearance underneath your trailer in the very back. So uh, you just have to be really careful. Um, we actually got some ramps for our driveway. We didn't have to use them. Um, but if you're going up a steep slope or there's, a, there's an angle there when you're backing it, just be aware you only have 10 inches of clearance on the back, even though your trailer itself, again, leveled at the very back, you have plenty of clearance. It's kind of deceiving. You go, oh, I have 22 inches. You really don't. You really only have 10 and a half. So just be aware. Um, also, I didn't cover it underneath is your leveling, your stabilizer jack, sorry. Those are in the back of the trailer. Um, those of you that are looking at them are gonna go, Michael, you didn't put the pads down. It's just sitting in our driveway, so I didn't mess with it. I just put them down, uh, fold it up, and it stabilizes just fine. So um, your standard 30 amp cord, it's fairly long. Um, we have it connected to the front of our house um, and convert it into our 110 so that we can we can get some power to the trailer. Uh, nothing really here in the middle of the trailer. Um, remember to chalk your wheels. I've seen lots of pictures from folks where they park their trailers either at their house or at a campground and they don't chalk their wheels. Um, you want to make sure that you chalk your wheels both in front and behind. Only a single axle trailer in the 17B. 
So we're, again, we're going to talk about tires because if a tire blows and has a catastrophic failure, that's going to be a problem. The air conditioner. Um, you'll look on the forums and people will talk about the air conditioner is leaking. The air conditioner does leak with condensation when there is humidity. Um, so we've had some very dry days and it wasn't leaking. Um, we have about 20-25% humidity in the air here in Arizona right now and we're getting condensation that's leaking down the outside of the trailer. Perfectly fine. Um, over here, fresh water connection. So if you're going to fill your clean water tank, uh, that is where you're going to do it. It's fairly standard, nothing super exciting. And then your city water connection. So if you are going to connect um, to your city water when you pull into a campsite, it's got a nice little filter that gets the large particles. You'll want to get a filter for your campsite to connect so that you get true filtered water and you can replace that. And a water pressure regulator, thank you. Um, here's all of your weights. <coughs> and your pressures for your tire. So really important, we're gonna do a separate hitch episode where we're gonna talk about how important it is to make sure that your tow vehicle and your trailer are hitched correctly. Um, lots of people have asked us questions about, hey Michael, you're towing this with a 4Runner. Um, are you using a sway bar? And are you using a weight distribution hitch? Um, we are using a sway bar. We are not using a weight distribution hitch. Um, and then as we move towards the very front of Stella, um, one of the things that's kind of deceiving is this little piece right here. Um, a lot of times you see armor plating on your trailers. Uh, this is not armor plating. This is a very thin sheet of metal to protect your trailer from things that get kicked up by your tow vehicle. Um, so just be aware, some people I've seen put additional armor on there and that's fine. Just be aware of the weight you're adding to your trailer. Um, so here you see some of the setup for our sway distribution bar. Um, standard battery, um, it's, it's only one battery. So um, if you're gonna go boondocking, you might wanna think about a generator because this is not gonna power your air conditioner. Um, so also standard propane tank, we only have one propane tank. Now your refrigerator in this trailer does run on electric only. So um, one propane tank just really in the inside is powering your electric, your, I'm sorry, your water heater, uh, things like that, right? So, and your stove. So your furnace is actually the fireplace, which is electric. So propane is probably good with one tank. Here you have a leveling jack, um, pretty standard. Some people talk about, well, this doesn't pull out so I can use my stabilizers. It doesn't. This is not the same thing. This is integrated into your into your leveling jack. So um, you're going to have a separate device. I've seen lots of problems with that device. The one that the dealer gives them doesn't fit those stabilizer jacks. You just want to use a drill and a drill bit. And we've got that link down below in our profile. Uh, they're about eight dollars. And then you just bzz, bzz, with the drill and you're done. Um, this is quite the workout. We're actually talking about putting an electric one on this. Um, and then you can see we use a lot of wood to, to stabilize us. Um, I've seen people use those stabilizer blocks. You do not want to put metal on plastic to stabilize. That's, that's a non-starter for us. Um, this jack actually goes into the wood a little bit uh, and creates some stability so that it doesn't slip off. Uh, it's very, very stable. So. Um, one of the other common questions that we see about the front of your rig is lots of people say, well, Michael, I unplugged it from my house and my battery went dead. Um, that's because there are things that continue to run in your trailer. Even if you turn your refrigerator off, things still run in your trailer, right? You still have the uh, gas sensor in your trailer that's drawn off the battery. So you're either going to want to disconnect um, one of the battery terminals will do it for you or you'll want to get a battery switch and have that installed or do it yourself. They're fairly easy. Uh, we've done neither of those. Uh, we're actually connected to our home. So we're able to just uh, leave the battery alone. It's ready to go because we're leaving on Thursday to go on our first trip. So that's the 17B, that's the front. Um, we'll do a separate episode on, um, on the tow hitch connections. Um, but this little guy right here, 
this was our first problem with Stella because I couldn't figure out how the heck to get it unhitched. So if you are um, stuck, meaning your tow vehicle is stuck and you're pulling up on this thing and going, why isn't it disconnecting? Pull up and pull back. Um, so it comes up and back and that will release the, um, it's kind of a plate that goes underneath your ball on your tow hitch. Um, believe it or not, um, I can't tell you how many trailers I've hitched and unhitched and I actually epically failed on disconnecting Ruby from Stoa. All right. I think that's the walk around on the 17B. Thanks. Our next video will more than likely be about storage and how you on put the, the inside. most stuff. Yes, on the inside. Thanks folks. Like, subscribe. Appreciate you. Have a good day.